Uh, welcome to this broadcast, uh, Richard Gray here, on behalf of my wife, uh, Debbie, and the International Christian Center, Piri Maritzburg, has it, uh, our church. Trust you guys are doing well. Trust you are watching the messages. For those of you who've just tuned in f- for the first time, uh, please just uh, go to, stay, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's got some good stuff on it. I've left some very good messages there, encouraging messages for times like this. Father, I just pray for this broadcast today. I ask in the name by the blood of Jesus that Lord, you'd speak uh, through me today as the oracles of God, uh, truth in love, Father, that we may be encouraged, that we may be strengthened, <clears throat> that we might find, as it were, our ground again, and that we might have insight into your plans and your purposes and your willingness to, to perfect that which concerns our life, Father, so that, the, that we can fulfill what you've called us to do. I ask this for my friend today, in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Well, listen to this powerful song my daughter Michelle's going to be singing uh, in Jesus' name. And there's nothing impossible in the name of Jesus. So while this song is playing, why don't you uh, uh, begin to just ask God in the name of Jesus for things that you need because death has to bow, sickness has to bow, poverty has to bow in and by the name of Jesus Christ. Well, listen to this ministry.
Well, I know you were totally touched by that song, and I know it's going to ring afterwards in your spirit. And you know, the Bible says, call on the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? It's Jesus Christ. And so whenever you call on the name of Jesus, and the Bible says God will deliver you, and you'll have cause and room to glorify Him. Well, as customary, let me take up our tithes and offering. And uh, the scripture I want to use, I've been using it for quite a few times, funny enough, but it's going to go with the title of my my message today. So I thought I'd incorporate it into the message before I start preaching. You know, God wants us to expand our finances supernaturally. Yes, we go to work. There's natural means that we have to work. We have to labor. But there's principles and commands and instructions in the scripture, the, the very Bible that we live our lives by has got every answer to your financial need in here, by the way. And so I want to give you one <clears throat> a scripture in the very words of Jesus himself, his own covenant words of commanded promise to us. And it's found in Luke 6 verse 38. And I just want to read from two different translations today. In the New Living Translation, it says, give and you will receive. See, you know, for every, uh, God is a God of uh, condition and promise, cause and effect. Uh, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. So we have to act first. We have to give God something tangible first before he can give us something tangible back. Uh, in, even in prayers and in, 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 in fasting and giving and sowing and reaping of, 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 of ministering to people. So this is a, 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 a whole kind of principle, this, in every area of your life, but we're dealing with finances at the moment. So given and you will receive. Look how positive that is. You know, God's not a liar. If Jesus said it, then you can literally go to the bank with it. <laughs> you can literally stake your life on it. Uh, for me personally, in the last five decades, I've proved this to be true. Honestly, you're given it, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. It's common sense. If a farmer sows a, a, a thousand seeds, apple seeds or whatever, wheat seeds, milli seeds, corn seeds, he will receive much more back, but only with the measure of the thousand fold that he will get back to him. And uh, so I want you to know that that's how you receive. You, you only receive to the measure of your sowing. And uh, if he sows 10,000 seeds, you can imagine the kind of harvest that he will get back. The Amplified Bible says it this way, given it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use, when you do good to others, it will be measured to you in return. And you know, concerning tithes and offering, the Bible says it's a command to bring the Lord's tithe into the storehouse, the local church. If you, uh, as a believer, don't belong to a local church, I say this without shame, you're welcome to tithe and bring your offerings into this ministry. We're good soil. We are actually, I've been with uh, Dr. Fred Roberts for the last 40 years. He's, yes, he's gone to be with the Lord now, but he's, uh, we are under the covering of the Durban Christian Center. And uh, so we, we, this is good soil you're sowing into. Father, I pray as your uh, people uh, bring their tithes and offerings and sow into the ministry today. Father, that you as the great I am, the possessor of heaven and earth. You said the earth is yours, which includes all the banks and the people and every business, every resource that is available, it's yours. The people that own it are yours and the fullness of everything is yours. And you will cause people to favor us as we favor you, Father. So I release your covenant blessings of you, the possessor of heaven and earth, Father, upon uh, my friend today, upon your children, upon your people today, as they are obedient 
to your word. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. God bless you. We appreciate uh, every dollar, every pound, every rand because people watch us from overseas. If you're in another nation, sow. Sow to this ministry. Uh, sow to the Lord. Be, be obedient to the Lord. Let me just say that. Okay, so the, the title of my message today is The Mandate to Multiply. We have a mandate, we have a command to increase in our lives. We have a command to, to uh, occupy. Remember, Jesus said, occupy till I come. That word occupy means to take possession and do business. I love, and I'll, I'll remind you often, and I remind my church often of Obadiah 1 verse 17, which says, possess your possessions. In other words, if you've got, if you have, if God says, possess your possessions, listen to this, then there's possessions that you haven't possess yet. And those possessions are for our well-being, for our good, uh, for our family, to be a blessing to others. You know, that should be the, uh, the abundance where you can be a, a, a giver. You know, life is not measured by how much you get. I believe with God, it's by how much we give. You know, that, that's, that's how I believe God's going to judge us when we get to eternity. And so here's a scripture, Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 5. There's, there's, there's uh, four different instructions. This is an instruction. This is a mandate to multiply. Yeah, God says, enlarge the place of your tent. Your tent is your life. It's symbolic of your life. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Stretch out. That means go bigger. Come on, do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. In fact, there's five or six here, seven. Verse three, for you shall expand to the right and to the left. It's a command from God. It's actually a command. He has the mandate to multiply. And we're going to see a few more scriptures that correspond with this as well. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. And, and I just want to carry on with verse 4 and 5 because I felt it was necessary to add it into this. It says, do not fear. See, because many times people stagger at the magnitude of God's promises. Caleb wasn't one who staggered at the promises of God. He went for his mountain. And so I want you to not be afraid of the greatness of, of the 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 provision that God wants to give to you now today. Do not fear, you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. In other words, God says, I won't cause you to fail. There'll be no failure. There'll be no letdown. Uh, and if you have, by the way, I believe this is a prophetic word for you now to strengthen the legs that are lame and the arms that are weak. Let God be the glory and lifter up of your head. And it's time to put your hands back to the plow of business or ministry or whatever that dream was and begin to press forward toward the upward call, call of the mark of God in Christ Jesus because God is with you underneath of the everlasting arms. No man shall pluck you out of his hand. He is holding you so that you can hold on to your promises. He's not a man that he should lie. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, not in any area of your life. You will forget the shame of your youth. Some of you have had a bad youth, a poor youth. Poverty struck youth, violent youth. God says, I'll wipe that away. You won't even hardly remember that anymore. And yeah, I believe there's a prophetic word. Uh, it says, and you will not remember the approach of your widowhood anymore. Widowhood means that uh, uh, the, the partner, the covenant partner has died. And so God says, uh, verse 5, well, let me read it. For your maker is your husband. In other words, God is covenanted to us, especially as a believer. You are the bride of Christ. We are married to Christ. We have a covenant groom, as it were, the, 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 you know, the, the bridegroom. We, we have a covenant with him, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Sake us. In fact, it says the Lord of hosts is His name, the Lord of warfare and service. And your Redeemer, someone who redeems you, buys you back and, and, and puts things on the table for you, is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Look at that. So th there's the promise. And I looked up the Hebrew word for enlarger and it means to expand. It means to widen, go beyond 
God wouldn't tell us to, to increase and multiply and go beyond if it wasn't possible. All things are possible to him who believes. I want you to believe today. Don't, don't doubt, don't question the word of God. God. God just requires us to believe, that's all. And then go forward and then it's his business to bring the miracle. It means to make more room. That's what the word Rehoboth means. Uh, they dug wells and they called the one well Rehoboth. Uh, in the scripture, that means make room for me. So you know what you've got to do? You've got to have the audacity, the, the spiritual audacity to tell demon forces, make room for me. Tell the world system, make room for me. Why? Because God has made room for me. He's my shepherd. He's gone to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He's gone to prepare green pastures and still waters and He's leading me on the paths of righteousness. The king's are way. Make room for me. You need to have that attitude without pride. But God commands it. Yeah, he, we just read that He said, you've got to enlarge, stretch out, spare not, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. In other words, get strong and expand to the left and to the right. And you will not feel or be ashamed. So the word expand means to increase capacity, capacity of gifting, capacity of your calling, capacity of more, reaching more people for God, to go further that's what the word enlarge means to occupy new territories with no limits or boundaries come on do you think God would say something if he wasn't going to back you up just look at the children who came out of Israel crossed the Red Sea and went into the promised land full of giants 31 cities that they conquered supernaturally and got all of their possessions and God said to them I'll give you cities you never built I'll give you houses you never built I'll fill your houses with all good things. I'll provide all your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That is the promise of God. But you know what? We have to cooperate with God. We've got to say, okay, Lord, where's the new territory? Maybe it's hard to pioneer new into new territory, but God says, I'll be with you. I will cause increase as you do it. Remember, it was Jesus' command in Matthew 16, verse 18, where he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What does the very word build mean? It means to expand, to take possession, to take territory, to increase every way down first, destroy the devil's works, spiritually speaking. Then you lay the foundation. That means you, you establish your roots. And then you begin to build up, down, sideways or whatever. And then you take possession of what God wants you to do. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell, which means no devil in hell. No matter how strong that devil is, no matter how many of them there are, they are more for us than they are against us. And so... You, you and I cannot be defeated. Just like that song, we cannot be defeated because Jesus is the spirit of life, uh, of, of the law of the spirit of life, in, of, Christ, of life in Christ. Jesus is in us that he is, will overcome constantly the law of sin and death. Isaiah 9 verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace. You know, just the order, government and peace. So when we increase in government, when we increase in obedience, when we increase in obeying the commands and the statutes, because Jesus said, if any man love me, he must keep my commandments. So when we increase in that and we are found faithful in the little, we are immediately, uh, when the time is right, God will promote you into the big. Because he says, if you're faithful in that which is little, <laughs> woo, you'll be faithful in that which is big. So I want to encourage you today, don't don't, don't get depressed. Don't get uh, full of self-pity. Don't, don't let lies dominate you. Let the truth of the living word and the promises of God's command uh, fuse into your soul. Let the zeal of God come inside of you because he carries on you. He says of the increase of his government and peace, provision, fullness, there will be no end. It's a never increasing kingdom and you and I are part of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace and joy in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. 
He says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. God is for you. He's a God of justice. From that time forward, even forever, it's a never ending kingdom. So right now it's kind of our apprenticeship to prove ourselves for eternity. And then it says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal, the enthusiasm, the the the, the willingness, the 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 together. The, the fellowship, the, the friendship, as it were, whatever word you can think for zeal, uh, the excitement, the, the, the encouragement of the Lord of hosts, the God of warfare and service will perform this. Do you know, uh, I, want, I want to bring this up too. There were seven deliverance promises uh, of God to the Israelites. And even though you'll read the scripture now, they were so vexed and so in bondage. God gave them seven deliverance promises. And and even though they couldn't believe him. So I want to say for you now that I believe God is going to just, well, uh, it's it's a crazy scripture because it's almost like I'm contradicting faith now. But I believe God is going to help some of you. If you can just acknowledge these seven I wills, for your life and just say, okay, God, I can't see it. In, in now I'm too messed up. I'm, I'm, I'm too downtrodden. I'm, I'm too bruised. I'm too broken. But Lord, if you can see a way, because remember Jesus said, I will not bruise a broken reed or put out a smoldering flame. He, he won't do it. So God will rekindle the fire. He will mend you up where you're bruised and broken and he'll make you into an instrument of righteousness again. And remember, these are royal decrees. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords decreed this. And He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And I still believe this holds for today. These are found in Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 9. Uh, Number one, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, the world system, poverty, sickness and death. God says, I will bring you out of it. Number two, I will rescue you from their bondage. In other words, I'll free you from poverty, sickness and death, depression, anything that that you know is binding you. God says, that thing, I will will rescue you from it. Number three, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. In other words, if God before you, He has to be against your enemies and you will see it. You will see from spiritual, mental, physical, financial, emotional enemies. God will sort all of them out just to redeem you uh, with His outstretched arm. You know, the arm of God, no no one can, uh, uh, Daniel said, who can say to God, what are you doing? And you can stop His hand. No one can stop the hand of God. Verse uh, number four, sorry, I will take you as my people (laughs) to be the, the people of God, to be a child of God is royalty, divine royalty. If you can catch that and soak that in. Number five, I will be your God. Hey, listen, when God's your God, no other so-called God can come against you. No, nothing else can come against you. Why is the creator? He created everything. He knows how to sort them out. He knows how to stop their machines, as it were, to make you uh, prosper and, and come across victorious. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Listen, they were enslaved for 400 years. To them it was generation after generation. And when God came to that generation of Moses, they, 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 uh, they were so sore, uh, grieved, they, they couldn't see it. But God did it anyway. You know why? Because He promised. <laughs> oh my goodness. Number six, I will bring you into the land, the land or the promises you know, the Israelites had a land of promise. We have a book of promises. So whatever promises God has promised us in Scripture, the Bible says all the promises of God are yes and let it be in Christ Jesus, uh, which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Number seven, I will give it to you as a heritage or an inheritance. I am the Lord. In other words, I'm swearing it. I'm promising it by myself. And God, remember, he's, he's a man. He can't lie. And so Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. Father, I just pray right now over anyone that might be in that condition. I break that 
that uh, lying mindset in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release the light of hope inside of them once again and the promises of God. And I ask your Holy Spirit to be the after minister to just encourage and comfort them that yes, they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center, Peter Maritzburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows. During our summer months, we meet from October until the end of April at 8 a.m. in the morning. During our winter months, from May till the end of September, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. As I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood, I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, Thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray.